Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. We are in the middle of winter and a lot of us recognize how good a blade bait like this guy is during the winter months. Uh, yeah, I think at this point the blade bait is considered one of the best cold water baits that we have. So when I say cold water, I'm talking 50 degree, 55 degree water temps or cooler. Uh, it really is one of the best baits for your extreme cold water temps. I'm talking 42 degrees or colder. It just seems to generate a lot of bites. And it's not just for bass. Works great on walleye. I catch a lot of muskie on it. Uh, pretty much anything that feeds on bait fish will eat a blade bait because that's what it mimics, a dying blade, a dying fish. Uh, and it's definitely one of my favorite ways to fish. I am a blade bait fanatic. The wall behind me to the right of Bigfoot on the door is full of blade baits. So I try a lot of them and I find some definitely work really well. Some of them don't really work as well as I would like. And one of the biggest keys is how fast the blade starts. I really want something that will start vibrating almost instantly when you pick it up off the bottom. Uh, but that's kind of another thing. I've done other videos on that. In fact, there's actually a good video came out uh, by my buddy Mark Fisher yesterday or two days ago uh, regarding blade baits. He does a lot of underwater bait comparisons, so I would highly check that out. Uh, Mark Fisher Outdoors, I'll put the link in my video. In fact, guys, he's nearing a thousand, so why don't you just subscribe to his channel and help him get to that thousand mark. I know that's something he's been working really hard for, and if you like his underwater videos, he does them every Wednesday. He calls it underwater Wednesday. So check those out. And he recently did a blade bait. But today's video is not necessarily about the blade baits to choose. It's about unconventional places to throw a blade bait. You know, like I just said, most of us consider a blade bait a cold water lure. But in reality, it is a year round bait. And I want to give you a bunch of different scenarios where I love to throw a blade bait that are not winter based. The first is one of the prime times to be fishing deep. That post-spawn early summer period, if you're talking about fish that move out to ledges, uh, a blade bait is a phenomenal ledge bait. So I'm talking about a lot of your TVA lakes, a lot of places where you have a little bit of current moving through and the fish will start to gang up on ledges. Uh, the blade bait, for several reasons, is a phenomenal ledge bait. The first being you can cast it a long distance so from that standpoint, you can cover a lot of the ledge. It falls really quick, so it gets down to the bottom. And three, it stays near the bottom. It's just a really good bait at generating those bites from those fish. So if you can find a school of fish on the ledges, uh, sometimes what you'll find, especially these days, the more and more pressured they are, the, least, the less likely they are to actually bite. And a lot of times what you need is a bait that will get them to react. And as soon as you get one to react, it fires the school up and you can catch three, four, five fish. Blade bait's one of the baits that I found that can really fire up that school. So do not think that you cannot throw it on the ledges. Great ledge bait. Absolutely phenomenal ledge bait, to be honest with you. It's one that I have tied up every time I'm fishing a ledge event. Another place to throw it is in some of your deeper grass or over the tops of grass, the same places you would throw a lipless crankbait. Now in those situations, I'm not gonna throw like a half ounce, like this knock and jaw. This is a jackal knock and jaw, one of my favorite uh, vibrating jigs, but I would not necessarily throw a heavier one. I like to throw more of like the quarter ounce sizes so that it will tick the tops of the grass, but you can rip these out of the grass really, really well. And a little tip for that, if you throw one like the knock and jaw, look at the hooks on it. You're, you're, not, you're missing the front hook. These are double hooks. And from that standpoint, when it comes over the grass, it just comes up and over that grass really, really well compared to a full set of treble hooks. But a lighter weighted blade bait like this is a great way to bring it up over the grass. And it generates a lot of strikes. You can rip it free. Really, really good in that situation. Another place that I love to throw blade baits is on some of your gravel bars or shell beds. I've had some phenomenal days down in Florida fishing shell beds with blade baits. And again, it just has to do with the fact that those fish that are on those shell beds or shallow gravel bars are feeding primarily on bait fish. 
And there is not that many baits that mimic small shad or small bait fish better than your blade bait. And again, it's about generating that reaction strike. So if you can get those fish to respond uh, aggressively to this, a lot of times what that does is it fires up the other fish that are in that area and you can then go back through with a Carolina rig or a drop shot or something and catch a bunch more fish. Uh, but this is the bait that can generate them to really fire up. So if you've got some of those shallow gravel bars, uh, maybe, you know, in that five to 10 foot range, or you got some shell bars that are anywhere from four foot to, you know, 14 foot, something like that. Those are really good areas to throw a blade bait. Another area that I love to do it is on rivers, specifically around sand drops, some wing dams, uh, any sort of your shallow gravel bars with some current on it. And the reason for that is how these baits are designed, right? They're super narrow, they're super thin. And from that standpoint, they cut through the current better than almost any other bait. So if you're looking to position the correct cast down a sand drop or down a wing dam, you can do it really well with these baits, still maintain really good vibration and not have the current necessarily affect your bait as well as some other baits. You know, you cut the current, you can keep your bait down, you can keep it on the bottom, and therefore your bait is in the strike zone better than other baits where the current just pushes them or sweeps them out of the strike zone. Uh, so I really like to fish them in that manner. And then lastly, one of the best areas to throw it is on schooling fish. You know, if you're on a lake where you have a lot of schooling activity, or you have individual fish that are coming up and busting on shad or busting on uh, alewife or blueback herring, you might want to have one of these tied on. And the biggest reason for it is you can cast this thing a quarter mile. Like you can launch these, you can cast them accurately, and you can get to those fish that are blowing up further away from the boat. And again, we know that this mimics your bait fish really, really well. So you definitely might want to have one of these tied on if you're chasing schooling fish. Uh, the blade bait, not just a cold water bait. It is a year round bait. It is one that I have caught tons and tons of fish on, not just bass, all game fish will bite a blade bait. So give it a try, go to Mark's channel, give him a subscribe, uh, help him get to the thousand mark. Let me know in the comment section, are there other places you'd like to throw a blade bait so that others can learn from you uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.